Okay, good evening everyone. My name is Khalid al Saran. I'm your undergraduate teaching assistant for Structural Theory 1, 3230 under the supervision of Professor Body. This is the last video in the Introduction to STAD Pro. Uh, in videos 1, we learned how to create the beams for this problem and also how to uh, assign the material for this problem. In video 2, we learned how to create the supports and how to create the load combinations. Now, if you know how to do the uh, objectives in video one and video two, then video three will be pretty easy to accomplish. All you need to do is just do the analysis, which StatPro does a very quick job of that and probably excellent job at doing that. So, we go to our analysis and print box. When we click on our analysis and print box, it will give us the option of to perform analysis. Now make sure you are clicked on no print because we don't want to print anything yet. And I click add, I hit close, and to the right I have my perform analysis. It is currently checked with a green mark which means we're ready to go with our analysis. Now if you want, if you want to view your loads you can easily click on this button and you have your loads labeled. Now let's run our analysis. We go to our analyze tab here and we click run analysis. It says here the structure has been modified. Uh, this is because uh, certain times uh, if you modify any small detail about the structure it will note and you can always just hit save. Okay? When, when, when you hit save it will run the analysis, analysis automatically and as you can see it's a pretty quick analysis because it's a very simple beam that we're dealing with. We have zero errors and zero warnings. We are good. If you have a warning and you want to know what warning it is, you can always hit the view output file, but since we don't have any of that, we can stay in modeling mode and we can hit done. Okay? Now, it has performed the analysis. I want to view the data results. What what are, what were my three objectives on in video 1? Well, I needed to find the I wanted to find the reactionary forces, the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram. So I go to my post processing I click on that. It has already selected load case 1. I click OK. And as you can see here, it automatically goes to a different window with our original beam and another line that has been, that looks like a parabolic line. But keep in mind that this line is actually the deflection line. If you look at your tabs here, you can see that this line is pressed in. And if you hover over it, it will give you a box saying that it is the deflection. So if I click on here, it will unselect that and it will give me a blank beam. Okay. Now I want to view my reactions. How do I do that? Well, I click here on this tab which says reactions. I click and there we go. We have our results. Now to move the beam in a free motion just so you don't get it in the way of your reaction box, I can click on my scroll bar on my mouse and I can move it up until I deem it appropriate for me to print this out. Okay, As you can see in node A we have a 13 kip force going up because there's no negative sign and I have a 17 kip force on node C or node 3 going up and this is uh, this is this makes sense to me. Why? Well because if you look at our loads which we can always view from this button you can see that we have a 10 kip load closer to node C. Therefore, it would make sense if this was higher than uh, node A. So if I want to remove... Now, I would like it if you guys would take a picture of this as it is, because it shows me the loads as well as the reactionary forces. Now, how do we take a picture of this? Simple. We go to this icon here, which says take picture, and it conveniently looks like a camera. I click it. It says here picture 4. Del you can delete the ID and you can type in reactionary, I like to keep it all caps, reactionary forces and hit OK. So that's one picture taken. I want to take pictures of my shear force diagram. So I click on my displacement tab. Again I want to unselect the deflection line by going to this button over here. I click that and now for the shear force diagram, I click on this button which says shear in the y force, in the y force direction. I click on that. And here we have just a general outline 
of our diagram with no values whatsoever. This is not okay. I want to see the values so that I can check my hand calculations. So I go to my results tab, I click that, I click view value, I go to beam results, I go to my shear, I hit ends, and I click annotate. I click close, and as you can see here, we have our uh, shear force diagram annotated, and you can see that at node A, we have a 13 kip going, 13 kip force, shear force going up, and uh, node C, we have a 17 kip force from the reactionary uh, force at support C, uh, bringing the shear force diagram uh, to zero. So this is, uh, if I have my hand calculations in front of me, I could check it pretty easily and I can be more confident in myself when turning in the homework. So let's take a picture of this. I go to my take picture icon. Let's call this shear for, let's call it shear force diagram, diagram, and I click OK. OK. Now most importantly, let's do our bending moment diagram. So I unclick my Y, y my shear force diagram, and I go to my bending in the Z direction, okay? I click on this, and as with the shear force diagram, it presents me with a general outline of the, of the diagram. From the, uh, from the uh, for if I want to see my loads on it correctly. So because I have a distributed load from node A to node B, I should have a second degree parabolic function here, which I do, since, and it also, the same reasoning goes from node B to C, I have a second degree parabolic function. Although this is much more subtler than this, but it is correct. So I unclick this, and I want to view my values for this. So I go to results, I go to view value, I go to beam results, I unclick shear, because I don't have my shear force diagram, I click my ends, I hit annotate. And then I click close. Okay, so while you're doing this, your, your units may be in kip inches. If you want to change that, make sure you go to your change graphical display unit, go to your force unit, and make sure your, your moment is in kip foot. I believe you probably have it in uh, kip inches, but make sure it's in kip foot. You can change the decimal places if you'd like. But again, the more you have, the more scientifically correct you are. Uh, and you click apply, click OK, and let's take a picture of this and let's call it our bending moment diagram. Okay, so we have three pictures and we want to set up our uh, report. Okay, so this is very simple to do. We go to, we go to, sorry, file, we go to report setup. Uh, this, so I had these from before just as I was practicing the video, but I'm going to put that back. And because we've taken pictures, I want to go to my pictures tab. I click that. And now I made mine in all caps so I know which one I should put in my selected box. So I, hi so I, I basically clicked on this and then I dragged down just to highlight everything. And then I hit the right caret button, which is this part. And now in my report, I have my job information, which is my name and the uh, client and the person who checked it. I have my react. This is optional too, but I prefer you guys to have this in just so I can see your names on it. You have your reactionary forces, your shear force diagram, and your bending moment diagram. Now, I would caution you not to press print right away because you want to actually see how the report looks like. So I hit OK. And now let's go to our file. Let's go to print preview report. As you can see, I have my job information. If I go to the next page, I have my reactionary force picture, I have my shear force picture, and I have my bending moment picture. Okay? So, if I am content with this, I can print. Okay? When I print, I would, I would prefer you guys to print it to PDF because it's much more easier. But if you guys want to do it to the WIPA printer, that's up to you. 
Okay, as long as you print it out and attach it to your homework, uh, it's, it's fine, whatever option you choose. But let's click PDF, okay? I hit OK, and let me save it to my, so I'm already in my Titan drive. Let's call this uh, example homework. I click save, and if I want to view it, let me go to my Titan drive. Let me go date modified. Uh, let me refresh this, sorry. As you can see here, date modified. It's uh, example homework. I click it, and as you can see, I have a nice PDF of my shear force diagram and my bending moment diagram and my reactionary forces. And I can uh, print it out from here. You can either do it in color or black and white. It doesn't matter to me, so long as I know it's from you by seeing your name here and you're, you have the necessary diagrams uh, present on your printed out stat pro uh, 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 homework. Okay, so basically what I would like to see is your hand calculations followed by your stat pro uh, printed, printed out report stapled behind it. And in this way, you can always check your hand calculations from the program and be confident that you will do well on the homework assignment. This concludes video three, and I hope that my introductory series has helped you guys in becoming acquainted with STAD Pro. And as with any program in the world, it takes a lot of practice to become really, really good at it. Good luck and email me if you guys have any problems. Thank you very much and good luck.